so I'm part of the journalism program and uh, we're, we're doing a story about how soccer team or yeah, soccer clubs in town are continuing to practice. Um, so obvious. Uh, so I just have a couple questions really. And then sure. I'll let you carry on with your day. Uh, so as to not take up too much of your time. Uh, California obviously has implemented a regional stay at home order that instructs Californians to stay at home. So as to present, prevent mixing between households. Uh, you know, when you think of soccer and soccer practices, you don't think that that would work with this stay at home order yet soccer clubs in town are continuing practice. Uh, could you elaborate a little bit more on that? Yeah. I mean, I think what we've done from day one was recognize the, uh, you know, the importance of, you know, way back in February and March, right. When this whole thing got going, uh, that this was not going to be a, a short term issue. Um, so we, we created one of our board members um, as our COVID officer. Um, so all of our decision-making at the club goes to one individual who's kept himself uh, very much apprised of all the stuff that's going on with the city, the county, and then the state, um, and actually outside of the state as well. So we have one centralized source so that we were making decisions very consistently. Um, and we felt it was better to have somebody neutral like that versus somebody like me on the competitive soccer side that, you know, you could be perceived, you have a conflict of interest that you always want to get the kids on the field and right. You know, right. type of thing. So we've always had that buffer and it's worked really well for us. So anything we do on the field, uh, we go to this individual first um, to get approval. Right. right. And then, and then his job is to interpret the rules and say, you know, I'm comfortable with you doing this based upon, you know, the information that's out there. So that's kind of been our internal improvement approval process. I can't speak for the rage, but that's been the ballistic, uh, you know, process. Um, right. I think at the same time, um, everybody recognizes that the kids, one outdoors is safe. Um, you know, in, in some ways, uh, you know, soccer is, is not a, what we consider a high contact sport. So we're still training with, you know, what we, we perceive it as, you know, incidental contact at best, you know, type of thing. Um, and then the recent thing with, uh, I think just this last week where they came out with a little thing going backwards, right? That's when we, our COVID guy had to say, all right, now masks are mandatory. You can't do anything without a mask. Or before that, it was a little bit more up to the player um, and the family if they wanted to have their kid wear a mask during training. Right. So um, yeah, no, that, that was, that was really the next question I had, what changes have been made to practice to, you know, ensure the safety and follow the, uh, the guidelines. Right. I mean, the biggest thing was, I think there was a bit of progression where back in July, when we kind of got going again, it was, you had to be in a 10 by 10 box. Right. And yep. it could just be you and your soccer ball. Um, and nobody could share equipment coaches couldn't have players pick up cones at the end of practice like they're used to doing or move a goal back over here. Um, so uh, you, you couldn't share equipment, you couldn't share bibs, um, you know, and you had to kind of stay in your box and your box had to be so distance from the next box, right? And right. we progressed over time from there to, you know, being able to be in sharing a ball between two or three players, you know, and then having, you know, two or three players in a little slightly bigger box, but still not touching. Um, so there's still a, you know, a no contact rule, a no equipment sharing rule. Um, those are still pretty in place. Uh, we do understand there's gonna be some, what we just call incidental contact. When somebody runs by somebody, you might bump an arm or something like that. Mm -hmm. But our, our, our people have said that's not a, that's not a concern. Um, and then we still don't allow the sharing of equipment. We still don't allow sharing of bibs, um, right? Um, right. Uh, I'm trying to think the other thing that came down was really the mask. The yeah. mask was the biggest thing in the last week, right? Our, our guys were saying because we're outdoors and we're in the open air, the masks weren't mandatory because we're not standing next to each other as a soccer player uh, for you know periods of time. We're just running by people. Uh, but this last week they said, nope, masks are on. Yep. And we anticipate them being on all the way through the month of January. Definitely. You know, it's, it's kind of what we're guessing at this point in time. Right. Um, what would you say has been the most difficult part about having training with this stay at home order? I think the most difficult part has been keeping 
players having fun and engaged and challenged with the limited competitive aspect of what we can do. Um, you know, you think you've been training soccer or any sport for 10 years, whatever, however long you've played, you, you train to compete on the weekend. That's like the, the game is that reward for the week of training. And I think the biggest challenge for coaches and players is we can't provide that. Right. Right. We can't, we can try to keep training engaging and new and different and add different elements to it, which I think we've done a pretty good job of doing. Um, but you can't replace that match on Saturday. Right. And I think the kids are missing it. I think the coaches are missing it. I think the parents are missing it. Definitely. Um, and I think the saving grace is I think both the coaches and the players and the parents are just enjoying so much being able to be outdoors. They're more tolerant with what they can do once they get there than it would under a normal circumstance. Right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you kind of briefly talked about it, but all things considered, how do you think continuing practices has gone so far? I think it's gone pretty well. I think we've done a good job of trying to add different elements to things with technology We've instigated some uh, technology. We've done some leadership classes. Um, we've offered some mental skills development classes at different ages. Um, so I think we've added some different elements to try to keep things fresh. Um, we, we went over to the Bay Club for, um, right. you know, that might've been on us for like two months on a Saturday and got to the outdoor court, started indoors and decided we wanted to be a little safer and go outdoors. Um, at that point, even. Um, so we went to the outdoor thing. So just changing the environment, uh, I think, allows a little bit of freshness, you know, to, to what the kids are being able to train. Um, so I think we've done a pretty decent job at that. Um, we have a holiday camp coming up here in, in a week for just a few days for to really what they are, some makeup sessions for things that have been missed in the spring and in the fall for players. Yeah, and we got Tom, we got Tommy Thompson coming in from the earthquakes. We got Nico Lemoyne coming in from Houston, both ex BUSC players. Um, so again, trying to just add a little bit of a different flavor and a little bit of a different personality.